The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 13, NASDAQ down 5, S&P's down 3, gold. Gold up $6, trading at $14.94 an ounce. You get silver up $0.09, cents, $17.63. Night Light Sweet Crew down a buck $63, $53.03 a barrel. King Dollar, King Dollar up 169 ticks, trading at 98,468. Now, King Dollar got in the lower range uh, last week. It's right above it, sticking a nose above it right now. We'll see how this uh, baby shakes out. The euro is at 110, the yen is at 108, and the pound is at 126. And the pound uh, is the one that got the push higher, which uh, get that dollar into lower price. So we get a bank holiday, a federal holiday, but the markets aren't closed. Yeah, bonds, no trading today as well, closed for Columbus Day, but markets, a uh, little bit of action. No doubt. Now, if we go back to uh, Friday, folks, we take a look at Friday, what you're going to see, you know, big day out here Friday. That being said, you're going to see also that uh, as you come into the close, uh, it last 10 minutes was kind of intriguing, actually. It just, sure was. You know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. It look, was a big one. Look at that thing, man. Yeah. So it, what happened is that, uh, yeah, uh, 20 minutes of four. Yep. You're at 29.92, and by four, you're at 29.63. Man, that's, that is a big yeah. one. Um, I know you were out. Larry was covering right. your program on right. Friday. I did the 3 o'clock update, right. taking care of a few other things. Come in and do the 4 o'clock update. So what happened, what happened, happened? man? What happened yeah. at the... I, I wasn't listening to Larry. It was a good program even on Friday, just tying up the week, right? Because and, man, went, I said... Look at that. You went right back to 9 o'clock in the yeah, morning. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was it was a more interesting 4 o'clock update than I thought it was going to be yeah. when I sat down in the chair because, boy, oh, boy. And then, you know, like I was just pointing out on my 10 o'clock updates... Uh, you really, you take that high, 29.92, yeah. what is that, 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning, we're at 29.53, you're talking about 40 S&P points right. from the last 15 minutes of trading on Friday, and, uh, you know, what happened, I believe, was that that is when President Trump and Vice Premier started talking uh, and yeah. the lack of details started to come out and so I mean, forth. They shook hands. There's a, there's a deal on that. And, right? uh, of course, you know, kind of a further follow-through for that, you could say, this morning, with China saying that they want more talks before signing a trade deal, and that's the before signing the phase one, which was the big right. hoopla on Friday. So the market pulling back, but we're about even And right if now. we take a look at the SPY, what you're going to see out here, folks, is the SPY, um, you can do this with the S&P, I mean, the futures, too. You're going into the downdraft that was created out here in August 1st, okay, as well as October 1st. And it's tremendously lighter volume. Well, let's look at this, actually. So we come into it with 101 million shares, Versus 89, low is 124, versus 142. So 142 would be the number on the daily versus, what did I say, 101? <coughs> no, yeah, 101. Now, if we put this on a weekly, we're going to, so we came off that high with 447. You went to it with 386. Yeah. Yeah. So. And just uh, was pulling up bank earnings right this week. So Tuesday, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, City, Wells Fargo. Wednesday's Bank of America, and Thursday's Morgan Stanley. Yeah. So that'll big be numbers. a big, uh, big numbers, big action. So let's go over. Let's go uh, J.P. Morgan first. Let's go take a look at it. You know, J.P. Morgan right now trading one sixteen twenty seven, and they're looking tomorrow morning yeah. seven a.m. Look at that. 28.5 billion in 90 days they're looking for. Not bad. No. And they're going to take, it looks like, 246 to the bottom line. Yeah. And if we take a look at this, well, see what happens here, man. I mean, yeah. this also didn't hold price, but the volume wasn't bad. And it was pretty good, actually. We're going into 11 million, but you're going into 2015. Let me pull this back a little bit further and see what else is there. Oh, look at this. I see. This, so this is going to be challenging. This is pretty cool, actually. So we've been at these highs now for March of 2018. Yes. Look at that, huh? Yeah. What a consolidation yeah, that is. Yeah, definitely. Man. Can I even pull it back more? Because that's when there's a lot of things for almost two years almost, I know. right? I Take know. it back even to 10-year weekly. Because the run-up prior to that's 
pretty intense. This yep. is almost like a market. Um, we can pull up the SPY afterwards, but this is going to be the same. Yeah, February 23rd. Yes. Um, and let's just see because where the... No, it's not going to be... Yes, this. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you look at the market, there was almost a two-year point right. when you go back right. um, and put it on the same, like, 10-year weekly. And yep. you can see that that's the February, March, right? right? You know, And, yeah, there's been some severe volatility, the run-up from 2010, probably even from 28, 2008, but two years, almost, March at if least. You put that on a monthly for a second. Yeah, put it on a 10-year monthly or something. You want to go back a little longer, 15-year sure. monthly? Because we'll see 2008 when we get down, if we bring it back. Yeah, and you can see, you know, you're, you're at highs. There's no doubt about right. that. Now, well, that high, the first high out here, January, 286. So that's 10 points lower. You'd have to get back inside that to get in the lower range. Sure. But, um, yeah. I mean, we what was uh, the low was 284. So oh, so we did get back yeah, inside that. And that's this current this month. month. And yeah. it's only October 14th. Right. Let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities, and you can expect a low volume market out here today, folks. Uh, more than like we're going to go sideways, but I suspect low markets, uh, you know. Yeah, a lot know. of schools closed, right? right? So maybe there's some parents out. Uh, you get a long weekend. The banks are closed. Yeah. That's and, enough um, to bring down trading. Yeah. yeah. And other, there might be some school vacations uh, this week. I think this is one of the ones where when I was a child, not that you'd feel gypped, but everybody already had a Monday holiday and you got that week off. Really? Remember that? I think would go away. Okay. Yeah, that was the one. Um... Well, in the Northeast, everyone has off. Right. Down in Florida, they don't. But today, in Pellas County, they made it a, a teacher's holiday or something. Okay, I know schools are closed out in Lakeland and as well, so maybe it's oh, more. So they make it a teacher's a big... holiday. Yeah, they changed it. Interesting. Okay. I don't know if it was a teacher's holiday out there, but I think they were just closed regardless for the holiday or whatnot. But... So if we take a look at the higher volume equities, there's not a lot of them out here. Parsley Energy, I think they're buying someone. What's going on there? Oh, so Parsley Energy, this is a shale producer, I believe. Oil and gas, natural gas company focused acquisition, development, exploration of unconventional oil and gas reserves in the state of Texas. Yeah, so they're buying... Jag Spending $1.6 huh? Yeah, look at that, man. <laughs> and they're a rival shale producer. Okay, Harlan yeah. Basin. You know what's amazing? I mean, hey, let's look at that oil market because... It seems that, you know, CL, that, I mean, oil at this price, you know, in 53, you'd think these people can still make pretty good money, but it's not setting up that way, man. I you would know? agree. Yeah. I would agree for sure. You know, so it's like, they can't make money here. The way this chart is setting up, I mean, you know, the low end of this is that $50 area, man. And... This, this is an anemic bounce, particularly because we know that the Middle East has huge amounts of problems. Yeah, there, were, there is probably some political risk factored into there, which means that it's even lower yeah. in a true demand because they're just not that worried if there was kind of a supply disruption that it would send the prices that much higher. Because if it was really priced in, you'd see a little bit higher price. Totally. You would. You yeah. certainly wouldn't see lower prices. You wouldn't see lower prices than before the attack on the... Um, Saudi oil fields, right. which is where we're at. And if we look at the the dollar, the number to keep your eye on the dollar, folks, is uh, 98,371. But you know, we got down there. We got down there quick on Friday, Thursday and Friday. You know, stay with your folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. I'm right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 18. NASDAQ down 5. S&P's off about uh, 3.5. Gold's up about uh, 570. And uh, if we go over to the pound, uh, the action is happening in Britain. There's no My head was there, too. We didn't even talk about it. I was maybe yeah. going to jump to those um, currencies or the pound, but the pound driving a lot of action, mm -hmm. man. Look at those two days, right? Daily? Yeah. yeah. And this is the second sign of strength that's got, you know, since August, folks. Okay, so this thing wants to go. You know, it came off the lows in August, had a nice sign of strength, wide price yeah. spread. We don't have the volumes on these. Certainly last uh, Thursday and Friday, you can see that thing uh, take off. And that's saying, hey, 131 is game now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I heard a comment from an analyst this morning saying it's behaving like an emerging market currency. And it's just so volatile because yeah. it is because there's a lot up in the air, more so than usually for a country the size of oh, there's no, Great Britain. There's no doubt. Yeah. And if we take this, let's just. Yeah. So even on a weekly, you know, if you get back inside, oh, look at it's there. Wow, we're sitting right on it. 126.62 okay. is really saying, yeah. hey, you're back in a higher range, which could get you up to uh, 133. Yeah. Um, I'd be a little worried only because that's a downtrend for sure. I mean, you look at that bounce, right? But a lot of it's going to be t determined by just the political income, oh, outcome of what I, I heard the probabilities from Goldman Sachs that they were putting on it. And I forget what they were. They were all very high in terms of like every possibility is still out there. Like, you know, no Brexit possible is like 25 percent. A hard Brexit is like 30 percent. A deal Brexit is like 40 percent. Okay. You know, it's it's the, By the 31st of this month. Everything's right? on the table or an extension maybe or something. Right. So you get the Queen Elizabeth's going to be outlining a speech today, right? Maybe delivered, it says in the past. So delivered a speech outlining the UK government's program in Parliament on Monday. So maybe she already dropped it as Boris Johnson laid the ground for the general election, which he aims to win public support for his Brexit strategy. They got some high-stakes poker going on over there. They do, man. So he wants that election, but the, I believe the other governing minority party, I'm not sure what, has to agree to it. Someone else, another party has to agree to it. And um, they don't want to agree to it just yet because what does happen is that they're not strong enough just yet you know, bottom line, that they think they can take Johnson out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So let's see. In Brussels, 
European Union chief negotiators said the prime minister's proposal to break the deadlock over the UK's divorce lacked details and risked leaving the single market vulnerable to fraud. Johnson's northern Irish allies in Parliament distanced themselves from his plans as time runs short. Doesn't seem like that's good news for the pound to be rallying, but there's a lot out there. I know. Yeah. So Johnson uh, set out his ambitions for governing the UK with an outline plan for what he call what he will do if he wins the general elections that's expected to be triggered within weeks. So interesting, man. Uh, the prime minister promised to focus on domestic issues so he can get Brexit done. Jeremy Corbyn, uh, the leader of the opposition Labour Party, has already dismissed Johnson's use of the speech in which the monarch outlines the government's program as a cyclical... Cynical stunt, cynical yeah. Stunt. Well... Same old, same old, man. Oh, they're, they're out there on the podiums. Extend and pretend. Uh, pretend and extend. I... We'll see, but the market, maybe, maybe, I don't know, quite a rally, though, right? Yeah. They, yeah. I, what, I, what I just can't figure out is that the pound wants to go higher. Is it going higher because they're going to get a Brexit or no Brexit? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I that's, agree. That's what it comes down to. I'm not sure, right? Let's go over to the silver market. So what you had last Friday, folks, when I wasn't here, gold came down hard. Now, what was so intriguing about that is that gold was coming down hard and the dollar was coming down. Now, silver, which is highly, much more volatile than gold, held price. Now, to me, that's bullish, you know, because I was really surprised that silver, you know, silver only went from a price point of 1775 to 1738. And bottom line, it held nice. And if we go over to the gold contract, what you're going to see intraday, it had a heck of a day, man. I mean, look at yeah, this. Yeah, it sure did. I believe 1478 about the low. from Yeah. The, and what is the high there? What's, We're looking at 1508. 1508. And, yeah, 1478. They, they laid it out at 1020 in the morning. So $30 from high yeah. to low, and then we were above 1500 Briefly, you, you climb it back $20-plus right. up till this morning. And, you know, when you pull it up, um, you had some volume here. Uh, now, it was going against lighter volume, but that was a, that's some big numbers, man. Yes. That's 486,000 contracts. Now, you're going against, like, 600, 588. Six, what, 652 is at a low of 1484, and we made it to 1478. So yeah. there's your rejection. Um, so this is really, a, it's, it's bottom line, it's pretty intriguing. Because watch, and this is where, if you're in this market, you, you have to keep your eye on this dollar, folks, because this is where, on Friday, it wasn't making much sense. Now, I wasn't on the computer a lot, but I was on at a certain point. And you can see, it's 1020. Yeah, look at this. So, uh, 1020 is up here. No, you're at 5 a.m. Oh, 5 a.m. I mean, there's 930. Yep, there's 1130 right in the middle. Yeah, so. 1040 is the high almost. Yeah. So, you had the dollar going down all night. It popped uh, at 1040. It went higher. And it, evidently, traders thought it was going to keep going higher because that was the low of gold also. That's when the dollar hit uh, 93, 394. But then it closed out uh, lower. And that's, that's this is where the battle's going to be, you know. And each time what has happened is that, you know, bottom line, you get to highs, doesn't have enough strength to keep going. You get to, as soon as you pull back at all, it seems there's not enough sellers. You know, so in essence, you know, we still have as an uptrend. You know, it's like, okay, man, it's, you know, I say there's no sellers, but the reality is that it's still going to higher highs, you know. You can make the case. Now, what gets cool here is that you can you can make the case that you broke the <coughs> uptrend that was out there, which would be the bottom of the consolidation, which is yeah. 95, you know, 843. No, you can yeah. see it before you even draw the line, right? right. Lots of lows kind of right. lining up pretty perfectly. Right. Whether it's one, almost two, you could count there. Yeah. That's close to, but three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten. And then, yeah. and then you get a break with conviction. Decisive, you, yeah. You get, you know, right. you get that Decisive. long break. So a lot of moving pieces. And, of course, when uh, we get the bank earnings that are going to kick it off. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to kick off everything. Right? J.P. Morgan within 24 hours, man. Yeah. And then the question is going to be, what can these – well, let's go to Apple. I heard Apple made an all-time high on Friday, too, I think, right? They get an upgrade, I believe, as well. <laughs> now it's an all-time high today, right? Yeah. Another day, another Apple record. Did, what is it? 1.07 1. 1. trillion, right? You know now. what's amazing? I remember when the uh, those pods came out, right? Okay, ear pods yeah. or air pods. That's yeah. What, yeah. And now that, and I believe when when Dave was on with me, this is a couple of years ago. Right? Okay. And he was explaining that there's no way that once the 
once the battery dies, that's it. That's all. Yes. That's all there is. Yeah. And now they're they're dealing with it. And oh, I bet. Yeah. There's, there's a couple stories, folks. So what happens, unfortunately? I guess they'll still work, but you plug them in, but they only work for 10 or 15 minutes at a That's time. That's how any phone would be if, you yeah, know, when your right, battery gets destroyed, right, it'll turn right. on, it'll just show it's probably high, and then it just depletes and in, so in rapid. And so now the question is, they got to buy a new pair. So what, how much do they cost? You know, I'm not sure, because okay. I have one. I have mine from a while ago. Okay. And in fairness to Apple, I think they were 99 bucks. Maybe they were 150 right? Okay. You get confused somewhere, because I bought them early. Uh, but they still hold a a charge pretty well and i'm yeah. going on probably because time flies three years maybe you really? know pretty early on from when they launched them okay because i enjoyed the fact that uh you know wireless some of the bluetooth wireless headsets are just big they weigh on your head you know you now, can do you still use them the airpods yeah. yes i yeah. use them all the time so once you get used to them okay cool oh yeah so people buy them again that's that's you know i think so you know well, they will. it if is kind of a 50 bucks a year it's you know yeah, it's kind. Of, that, you, really. you kind of feel like a little gypped if you know they just run out of battery and you have to throw away a perfectly good right. pair of headphones. But I haven't gotten there yet. Stay right there, Tommy. And I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9:30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is flat. Nasdaq's down 12. S&Ps are off 5. And, yeah, you know, if you go uh, over to WeWork and we take a look here, this is something else, man. Uh, SoftBank is saying we've had enough. If you got our billions, we want control, oof, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> Quite and a the, battle. The real question is going to be, uh, they even over their head? 
You know, yeah, I, I'd I, say they probably are, and that's yeah. what they figure their best shot is at least to gain control right. of the company for their investment, right? So it looks like they need a bail work, bailout in terms of WeWork, and that uh, hands control to SoftBank potentially. So its backers are considering also a $5 billion debt financing. I believe I heard JP Morgan in there, right? So yeah. let's see. The Japanese investment powerhouse controlled by Masayashi Son, that is to be SoftBank, is convinced it can turn around the cash-strapped American company WeWork with the right financial controls in place, asking, uh, so WeWork's board and backers, however, are also weighing another option. So kind of two options. Either they yeah. go to SoftBank for the funding, hand control the SoftBank, or they go with some funding from uh, a lead of JP Morgan. And Not small potatoes, $5 and billion. That's dollars. right. And the lead of JP Morgan, they'll also be bailing themselves out because they're in it hand over fist. So they'll push the package out, but the bottom line is that they're in it for... A little doubling WeWork. down, right? They're in it for WeWork. They're in it for Newman. They've, they've, they've sent big money into Newman. Yes. So this that is, was the embattled CEO that's yes. now quit. And with some, some intense here, folks, okay, they're talking like in the next two months that they're going to be running short of cash. Yeah, because they had an IPO plan, which yeah. was going to bring cash into the company to some degree, right. but then they also had a $6 billion loan contingent on that IPO. Right. So talk about so missing billion. some cash. Three, three billion they were going to get from the, the IPO. IPO. Okay. Six, that's nine. Imagine. Disappears six. overnight, and that all was by the end of the year because right. that part of that loan was contingent on them going IPO before right. the end of the calendar year. Right. It's October 14th. They got a lot of work. So it was Wall Street Journal first reporting that SoftBank may be discussing a deal to gain control. SoftBank is already their biggest shareholder, but the proposed deal would shore up its control of the startup. Uh, let's see. The Japanese company is in advanced talks to acquire more shares at a significantly lower valuation than the $47 billion that they just signed up for in January. Now, you know it's going to be amazing. We don't know yet. I'm sure some folks know, but I don't know what the prices of the... So, the prior Adam, Adam Newman, capital raise? Adam, Adam, okay. Adam Newman yes. had sold... He had sold 700 million in shares. That was a right seller. He has an additional millions that are on collateral or JP Morgan for the amount of money they gave him. Okay. Now we don't know, like, what is the collateral, right? Sure. And what is What's the, the price? valuation of What's that the collateral? Valuation? Sure. Because this is going to be like a classic when, if in fact, you know, uh, Sun basically gets to buy more shares, the question yes. is going to be, what does they buy me? Because then it's going to be a mock to market, which yes. is pretty intense. Yes. Yes. And, you know, might see that whole. That's pretty intense, man. Wow. And you know, hey, we'll. And now, what's also happening here? I, I know that you know. There's been a couple articles. Analysts. What analysts are doing, folks, is that they're ripping apart cities, trying to find out what cities they're the biggest in. Okay. And how much they overpaid for those leases. Okay. Because that'll that'll affect commercial property in those cities. You know. I yeah. Mean, if 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 trouble comes down, I'll sure. bike. You know what I mean? I'm just looking at the charts and pretty cool. So this doesn't even bring WeWork in here. And um, maybe that's just because it's not public yet, probably, right? Because Slack is now trading. Okay. So it's talking about the Vision Fund, their portfolio. You got Uber in white here. You got Slack in blue and Garden Tech, Garden Health in purple. Uh, all of those starting from a basis of 100, looks like in the beginning of July. Yeah. And man, oh man, you got 64, 68, and 72. That's not counting WeWork. And not counting probably anything else going on. And that's in on. his vision fund portfolio. Yeah. So, you know, as he's trying to raise more money, that's going to be tough, too. Yeah. Man, when it hits, it hits. That's that is for sure. Intense, you know? Yeah, it says SoftBank shares are down about 30% from their peak this year as investors unnerved by the WeWorks, the, U the Uber's disappointing debut, gross skittish about their valuation. Yeah, right. I would say so, man. And, you know, when you're looking at a long term, I mean, you know, long term to sun, he's saying 10 years. I mean... That'd be a pretty hard sell to say something. Hey, man, you want to invest? You know, you'll be profitable in ten years' time. My first thing when I read that is that uh, nobody ever tries to tell you that it's going to take us ten years of losing money. So if that's what he's saying, then what's the real number? Because usually the horizon is like one to two to three yeah. years. I mean, I don't even remember. I wasn't even thinking of losing money. I was thinking of just being flat. But that's what he's saying. That's exactly. I mean, they what he's say saying. substantially right. profitable, but you know, right. I think the the big question in the market is when are you going to stop needing cash? Oh, for sure. So why for is sure. he putting ten years out there? Right. And if you're putting ten years out there, you usually try and put a little bit of a rosier situation than you right. might be able to live up to. And, and you know, if you go across the country, you know, bottom line, these, these big major cities, folks, you know. 
have done very well. Real estate's done very well. And it doesn't mean that you're going to pull back dramatically, but we are at very high prices. Yes. You know, there's no doubt. And just interesting that I wonder what else is going on out here that people can't even talk about. So WeWorks retained major Wall Street financial institution to arrange financing. Approximately 60 financing sources have signed confidentiality agreements and are meeting with the company's management. So guess what? They're going over those terms, and they said, hey, before we pitch to these companies that we need money and they ask us how bad it yep. is, make sure they can't tell anybody when we reveal That's right. how dicey it might actually be within the, the balance sheet of this company. I know. Yeah. So let's go look at SoftBank in Tokyo. Okay. okay. 9984 it is, huh? Yeah. And what happens in Asia, folks, is that they're all numbers. That's instead of symbols, they're numbers. Oof, and there you go, man. Yeah. The, the fun to the downside began at the end of July, it looks like. And that's what, you know, interesting, that chart that we looked at last, that showed from July 1st, or was it? Yes, July 1st. Okay. So as, it would make sense, right? As an Uber sinks, yeah. this is going to sink. As Slack sinks, this is going to sink. Whatever, the Garden, Garden Health, I'm not familiar. But those were all showing the decline from July 1st, and, man, that high is towards the end of July. And we put this on them. Yeah, and you know, here, here's the danger for, you know, the SoftBank. So 46.60 yen, this is, a trade in yen. Okay. That's the highs of 2013. And you can see, you know, you get outside that range. You know, you stayed outside that range for a long period of time. I mean, August, uh, December got you back in. You know, but realistically, you can almost say that, okay, you, February of 2017, yeah. you get outside. December, you came back in. So this yeah. is this is a, this is trouble. I suspect December's game, but you know what? <laughs> That's game down there at uh, two thousand yen too, which would yeah. be really a hit. That'd and, be that'd be that'd be down sixty percent. Yeah. Yep. And I just wanted to see where Ooh. some of these lows. So twenty oh eight, you're at three eighteen. Three eighteen. Yep. And then you really you know push it more recently. What is the That's low here? That's a twenty here? bagger. Eleven hundred, all the way in the end of twenty twelve. Right. Um, and Uber was around, I believe, seven years ago, right? Maybe that was the beginning where yeah. some of those investments uh, yeah. were really Uber in particular in my head because that was the biggest. No, and, and he was making money at the beginning. Right, for that's, sure. yeah. It had, it had to do with, and this is what's so dangerous the, what happens with the private equity is that you and me get into Uber at the beginning, right? Okay, great, we're doing good here. It's set up that then the next round comes, let's say we're in $10, right? The next round comes, they convince us, hey, it's worth $20. So, okay, it's good, it's worth $20. That means our $10 one is worth $20. Right. They're marking up their own They're investment. Marking, sure. And we're marking up our own investment, right. okay? Next time they come around, they say it's 30. Oh, well, yeah. is it really 30? Well, what has happened here is that they mock, mock, mocked up, and then they went to the public, and the public yeah. said no. I and that only so. happens if you're dealing with the same investor, because usually the, the markets, well, guess yes. what? They were huge yeah. in terms of WeWork. SoftBank right. was one of the only people investing. Yeah, yeah. big time. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN.
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow is up 24. Nasdaq's flat. S&Ps are down one and a half. And if we go over, though, uh, I'm glad that uh, those folks in California, they're getting their lights back. But bottom line is that this is going to be the beginning of a long saga. Sure. Um, PG&E, right? Yep. Yeah, PG&E. PG. The PCG, PGC, maybe? Mm. PCG. Okay. So we take a look at this. And, you know, the bottom line is that they, they lost control. Well, the board thus far, PG&E board, has yes. lost control of the bankruptcy. Yeah. Uh, they might get it back. That now there's yeah. two other people that are involved in they it. They have competing project, um, yeah. proposals now. So, right. And some of those proposals coming from creditors. Exactly. Yeah. So you get that high volume low at 507. Looks like it wants to get tested. We're at 760 right now. The kicker, though, is this, folks, okay? And this is where when they first started this, meaning even just at the beginning of last week, what they were claiming, well, what the press release was saying to PG&E, that they didn't think that it was going to uh, basically get into major tourist places okay. far close to cities. Well, okay. That didn't that, they got okay. They got into Napa Valley in a huge way, and okay. they did get into Oakland. And so okay. they got into major cities. And if you can just imagine, you know, bottom line is that, you know, you're out there, you got no electricity for a couple of days. I mean, refrigerators, the, oh, amount, of, the amount of loss... And, yeah. and good. A, a brief moment of an hour, a few hours, you know, I don't even want to say a night because a night starts to really stretch into where things are going to matter, especially, yeah. you know, if you're if you're sick, if you're relying on any type of health yeah. devices when you're at home on electric, it yeah. really gets scary. Um, so brief moments, you know, not a big deal. But when you start talking about days, um, we talked about, I mean, Tesla was telling people to charge their cars, right? What happens yeah. when you, you're, you have an electric vehicle? You can't charge it. Your house is out of AC. Maybe you need air. Maybe you're sick. Maybe now you don't have a car. You don't have air. I mean, oh, yeah. that's not hard to imagine. Yeah. Right. Now, you get San Francisco. So what, this article is about San Francisco. They want to buy their electrical infrastructure yes. off of uh, PG&E. Yeah, within the city, such as yeah. power lines, other infrastructure, $2.5 billion. Um, not, I don't want to say not bad, right? San Francisco is an enormous city it to is. control your own electric for a right. couple billion dollars in light of what's happening when you don't control it. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see. The first one that's got turned down, okay, that was on sad day. They said significantly undervalued the assets yeah. is what their CEO. Well, you know, it's all negotiations. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, that's going to be a number because watch how this works, folks. This is almost like the... Uh, when Obamacare was trying to get through, the arguments would be that, okay, you have sick people, you have non-sick people, you got to put them together so they can smooth the curve out, right? Okay. So you can imagine, I can imagine who's ever going to take over uh, PG&E, they're going to go, they're going to say, hold it, no, we can't have San Francisco be on their own. Sure. Because I have all these other liabilities out yeah. there, 
And in San Francisco, there's not a lot of trees. Yeah, so. no, I, I, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it, I'm sure, I don't know the fundamentals of running an ele electrical company, yeah. but I'm sure it's very expensive per a house on the outskirts, right? Right. Versus you run right. one line into a city, one line into a building. A pop building, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, right. I, I would imagine you're, so. You're cranking it yeah. out. Uh, yep. You know, so this, this, that's... Then the question comes, though, is that on the people of San Francisco? to pay for it versus is it, should that be a statewide issue? Because if it really is something, right. you know, where the people of San Francisco are somehow subsidizing the entire state, you could do that, you can be okay with that, but it better be out in the open. And maybe that's why, you know, you pay state taxes and, yeah, a, and I, a city like that, San Francisco will end up paying more. I don't know. No, I, think I don't they, know. They gotta get the state deal together and get laws in place for liabilities. Oh, they're gonna have problems forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the, the real key is gonna be that Okay, how do you get the law for liability? Because it seems like PG&E didn't take care of a lot of things in sure. the past, right? But if they want electricity going forward, it's like, okay, here's yeah. the regulation. This is what has to be done. And, you know. Yeah. It's my opinion this is where government does serve a good role, and everybody should oh, agree, sure. because you got to have regulations, sure. you know, whether it's regulations. They want electricity, man. Yeah, and it should be regulations on both, you know, pushing forward the development of alternative resources, right. whether it is, but also regulating the upkeep of because yeah. it seems to be that, yeah, nothing was upkept. Well, why wasn't it regulated that those were checked by state regulators to make sure there was upkeep right. as part of oh. So listen to this. I, I, and Tommy probably didn't see this because I just saw this last night, and I, I happen to know something about it just because um, one of the guys that used to work with us, Jason, the con general contractor. Yes. We, well, the last building that we were in, folks, okay, the guy that owned it was Wilder, and he was one of the biggest owners of uh, mobile homes in Florida. So there was an article last night, and this is right in Clearwater, which not far from us, that's where we used to be, right? And what the article is about is that the mobile home structures, the, the folks that were drinking water there now, right? Bottom line, the kids are breaking out and all this in this day and age, and the drinking water, okay. the allegation of drinking water is not great, right? So what the article is about is in this day and age, and, and I know this because what had happened is that Wilder, who owned this other building, the state had paid him huge amounts of money to stop having the, the mobile parks, and they wanted him to sell them. And this is why. So when Florida got um, populated, you had all these mobile parks. Well, these mobile parks did not have city sewage. They okay. had all septic tanks that went, every mobile park had a septic tank that went into another tank on site that was supposed to clear, clear the water. Okay. To make a long story short, this has been going on. So we talk about regulation. They finally are going to shut this place down in Clearwater. You know how long it's been going on? Since 19, uh, was it 87, the first one? It's been going on for 25 years. Okay. And someone, 97 maybe is 25. Fe you know, yeah. fell down on the job. Okay. They bottom line, yeah. now it's going to get done. But, you know, you, you can see that it's like, I'd love to, like, okay, how did that go on for so long? When, in this day and age, you know, drinking water. Yeah. Because what happens, with this, so this would end up happening. The pipes are sold. That it goes from the septic tank to the, it's supposed to be filtered, right? Okay. And then, but the pipes are sold and the filtering, but that would seep into the ground, and they were all on well water. They weren't on city water. Okay. So the allegation is, is a hey. And then it goes into the well. And then it goes right. into the well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well. The part with the electric, you know, you say private business, you let them compete, you know, best service. Right. Uh, specifically with electric, that doesn't work because you don't want five different sets of electrical wires running through the city right. trying to have companies competing for the best price to keep their costs in check, to, to incentivize a, a top-of-the-line network that they're spending money on, because you don't want that. You don't want five sets of electrical no. wires. So you got to have one, you, therefore you have a monopoly, and it would make sense. A monopoly spends no money to upkeep their product when they have everybody locked into buying what they have. Yeah. Only in a monopoly could you have a company that's turning off the electrical, and their customers have nowhere to go, right? I mean, think of any other one. You'd just go to the next electrical Genrack, company. that's it. If this was an instance, even when we have, you know, we only have two competitors for Internet, right? Right in here, Frontier yeah. and Spectrum. At least you have two. Right. Because if one of them said, we can't service you, we're shutting down for five days at a time to make sure our network doesn't blow up, Toast. you'd go to the other company. You can't do that in electric. So you've right. got to have that regulation on those guys. Yeah. Dow, Dow's up by 29, Nasdaq's up 4, S&P's uh, flat, you get gold up by 720, silver's up 11, um, dollar, dollar's hanging above that number too, we're at uh, 98,467, and if we go over and we take a look at that, let's see, 
And you're not with these banks closed. You're not going to get a lot of movement in these currencies either. Right. No action in bonds. That, yeah. that would drive some of the action for sure. And and really pretty muted day, right? Hanging yeah. out. I mean, we we were low overnight, but pretty close to even right now. Ninety-eight three seventy-one. That's the number. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And uh, over the weekend, yeah, you had, uh, when we talk about Facebook's Libra, you had uh, a few monsters uh, basically pulling out. You yeah. MasterCard, Visa. eBay, Stripe. Yeah. Mercado Pago. Maybe that's one abroad somewhere, a big, big player. Big numbers. Um, so they, so many, in fact, that now the question is, does this even make sense? Can they even survive? Because I believe that <laughs> MasterCard and Visa in particular are probably vital players to that becoming a worldwide phenomenon, right? There's no doubt. And then the other side of it is that you can imagine, I don't see them getting it through, but if they ever did get it through, <laughs> then, I mean, because Facebook has the platform, right? They, they get the billions. They do, they but the, billions. the reason why I'd say MasterCard and Visa, they don't want regulators all up all over them. And, and I imagine they're, they're preemptively realizing that this might be a push too far and the, the, the regulators are coming. And yeah. it's because stories like this too, man, you know, right. in terms of, so you have Elizabeth Warren out there buying Facebook ads to point out the hypocrisy, how you can almost say anything right. in terms of politics, 
How can that be good? And she just created ads saying that Zuckerberg backs Trump, la, la, la. I mean, if right. Facebook's official stance is as long as it's political, they're not going to get into the fray at all. To actually be collecting money from politicians who are saying things Lying. factually incorrect right, in, right. In, in, in a nutshell. If you didn't hear from it, folks, so she started an ad out uh, saying that Facebook's chief executive officer just endorsed Trump for re-election. It, it backtracked after the ad, but the bottom line is that, and then Facebook turned and said, it said something like, well, if you're going to say lies like that, you know, you, you probably shouldn't, but like, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you listen under breaking news, you put it on Facebook. That's the world we live in, man. And so I would imagine that these companies, just to bring it back, they're making a calculated decision, man, saying, yeah. why are Get we going to tie ourselves to Facebook as they try and put out a currency on top of everything? Yeah. How much is the currency worth? No. Stay right there, folks. Good thing to swim coming up next. NMM is the Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Go get him, folks.